What's up, YouTube peeps? I then YouTube land. You already know this is your girl Burnett Perkins, and uh, I'm coming on here to um, talk about something that really, really bothered me today. It really did. I went, as everybody know, I'm a caregiver, CNA, whatever you want to call it. I wear <laughs> scrubs, okay? And I love my job. I love my job, you guys. I wouldn't have it no other way. I wouldn't ask for any other kind of job because I love taking care of people that need help out here that cannot take care of themselves. They used to take care of themselves very well, but as time went on, you know, they got older and health problems came into their life. So that's when me and a lot of more CNAs, caregiver, PCT, HHA, nurses, RN, LPN, uh, steps in, but they give our medicine. So, but uh, we step in and we um, take the place of what they lost and try to help them to regain um, their mobile ability um, or just get going, just to motivate them. Even if they cannot or they will not be able to. Um, do those things they used to do in life. We there to assist them, you know, and help them the best they can. You know, it doesn't matter whether you sit, you go in somewhere home and sit down and talk with them and have a conversation with them, you know, um, because they lo lost a loved one or they don't have children, they don't have family, you know, they don't have friends. So that's when we step in and we become their friend, right? That's how I feel about it. So I love what I do. Um, I do work for a company as well, and also I run my own little business. I have my own little bit, my own little thing. I do my little private care. You know, uh, I get out there. If I'm not doing YouTube or if I'm not at work, the area I live in, you know, you have a lot of retired elders, and um, I put myself out there. You know, I put, I, I mean, I really, really did. I put myself out there to do private care. And I'm um, a lot of people. I get a lot of people. <laughs> I tell y'all, I, I, you wouldn't believe it. Um, it's, it's getting to where I'm uh, thinking about starting my own business. I'm putting that in process now um, as I speak. And when y'all see me doing videos or whatever, that's my side side hustle my little side job that's not with the company i'm with that's when i'm you know doing my own little thing or whatever what not and um uh, it's private now i went and visit a lady today and um uh, she said she needed some um help for you know for three hours and i'm like okay you know someone told her about me and uh i jumped on it you know i said okay let me come by your house and um we can sit down and we can talk. You know, I got paid for it, you know, and I did what I can around the house the best that I can. I, you know, moving around, you know, it was just her apartment is a mess. And I really didn't get a chance to do really too much because basically what happened when I went in, you guys, is she sat down and she talked because she's here living in Florida. She's all alone. She's by herself. She don't have family here. She has a friend, you know, but she don't have family. And um, she got a lot going on. I mean, a lot, you guys. Oh, Jesus. I thought that um, I had it tough. Compared to her life and her lifestyle, it's just unbelievable. I, have, I don't have nothing to complain about. I do a little bit, you guys, but and I get into that as well as I take, you know, talk to you guys about this. But uh, I'm gonna show a video and I think like one or two pictures of uh, how she's living, and she needs some help. She really, really needs some help. She says she's not a hoarder, and. I look, you know, I now know y'all remember um, this show used to come on about hoarders, and I think it still do, you know, 
the old videos or whatever where people in denial saying that they're not hoarders at all because um, it's their stuff and um, they don't want to be it to be removed out the home. They're not using that stuff. They're just piling up and piling up and you got feces everywhere and I have seen some horrible stories. And this is her. This is this lady. She's 72 years old, you guys. And um, she's uh, went to school to get her master, her uh, bachelor, uh, you name it. She has it. She have traveled the world. She have been a, a teacher. Uh, I, she don't did it all. She have done it all, and I tell you. She showed me so many things that she had accomplished in life. And um, she's not capable of using all those things she went to school for and paid all this money, you know. And her mother and her father paid all her debts off, you know, when she was in college and all that. I mean, when I say she did a lot, she did a lot. She even did some things with uh, Hillary Clinton as well. You know, but um, she lived in an apartment complex and it's not handicapped accessible. Um, when COVID, when C-19 when C hit, because they say you can't say that. C-19 hit, <coughs> she um had to get one of her legs amputated. And she picked up weight when she was married to her first husband and she went through some stuff with him as well, you know, but let me, let, I'm not, I'm going too deep into it. So let me come back a little bit. Uh, she's in denial about she's a hoarder and uh, she have books and stuff, you know, and I took my book bag in, you know, cause I carry my stuff in my book bag so I could take notes and stuff. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, I seen a brooch. I seen a book or whatever, whatnot, and then she went to tell me later on because she went to tell me pretty much half of her life story that she can write a book on. It'll be a big ass long book to read, but hey, long as she draws attention to other females and males out there. But my thing is what I want to get with. I mean, tell you uh, people, you know, tell everyone out there is to check up on your mother, your father. Your brother, your sister, your aunties, your uncles, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your neighbors. Especially if y'all know they have health issues, health problems. You know, if you're taking care of a loved one, then make sure that they have everything they need. Everything and anything that they need. If they have a caretaker, make sure, you know, that caretaker is doing what they're supposed to do for your loved one. Um, if your loved one don't live around you and you know they sick, and sometimes they don't even, they ain't gonna tell you, that's the thing. You know, what is it that I wanna say? Make sure they had transportation to the doctor, from the doctor. If they don't drive, if they don't have nobody to take them, set up transportation for them. Set up, um, do their doctor's appointment for them. Make sure that uh, everything is in order with them when it comes to grocery. Uh, are they supplies, you know, house supplies they need, they medical supplies they need. Make sure they don't, that, that, that if they don't have insurance, get them on Medicaid, Medicaid or whatever, you know. If they have VA, make sure that the VA, you know, you set things up with the VA to where they have, they'll never miss out getting their medication, uh, they supplies they need, you know, the VA. Uh, what else? Uh, what else? What else? What else? I asked her, one of her legs is, she named whatever she have is a long name. I cannot pronounce it. I'm not going to pronounce, try to figure out how to pronounce it. Um, at all, because um, I never heard of those things she was saying, those names. But her other leg is so, it is, hold on. Mm. Her other leg is so messed up, you guys. And she's in a wheelchair. But 
it wasn't like that. She wasn't born like that. It's just something that happened over the years. And it like tumors. It's it's just like tumors swollen. You can't you can't see where her big toe start or in or her other to toes. You can't see none of that because the tumors is so packed up on her feet till she can't walk on it, you know. And and I asked her, I said, Do you have um a wound care person that comes by and take care of your wounds because now the company that I work with, they family, the people that I sit with, they family have wound care people come by, have therapy people come by, you know, to take care of them. And I don't know if she have good insurance. I don't know if she have any insurance. I mean, if she's on Medicaid, Medicare, um, it should be taken care of. And I told her, I said, you you should have wound care to come by your house to um <clears throat> take care of these wounds. Cause she got pressure sores on the on one side of her feet. But she said, No, I don't. She said, I take care of myself. I'm like, wow. You know, she said, I pay out of pocket for the things that I need to take care of this wound. And I told her, I said, if you receive any kind of assistant you should use it you know before i mean i i can't say before it get worse because it has got worse i mean it is hard with you guys you know it is so disgusting and then it has a smell to it but it don't smell horrible real bad to where you can't tolerate it you guys probably can't tolerate it but it's not so bad of a smell to where i can't tolerate it let me put it like that and uh, yeah, I told him. I said, you need, you should have a wound care. Have some a nurse to come by to um take care of your skin because it's very, very, very hard. It's like concrete, y'all. Her skin is so hard. It's it's cracking. You know how some people the heel of their feet in the back of the heel of their feet is cracked and split and ashy. That's how her whole entire leg looks. And the toes underneath her feet look worse. And she can't even clean between her toes. Basically, it need her, she should soak it, but she can't because it's just her. She live alone and it's just her, so she can't do it, you know. It, need, it needs to be taken care of by um, a specialist, you know. But my story is, what I want to get out of is, is to take care of your people. You know, don't don't leave your family out there by themselves. Don't. It is so sad. I go into a lot of homes to where there's family involved. They take care of they, you know, sick family member. And then I go into some homes where that family don't have anybody but themselves. And when I tell y'all, I did a little bit around my house, but not much as I would like to because it's so much stuff there is it's it's hopeless. You would have to get someone come in there and to take that stuff out. And she won't let nobody come in there and take it out. So I was with her for three hours. I go back next Monday and work with her again for another three hours. And then uh, I just can't go back. Because I talked with her, you know, I talked with her about some things she needs to do. I gave her some suggestions on it, and she's not willing to let it go, you know, because it's her property. And y'all will see the video, y'all will see the pictures, and I, I just can't do it. You know, I, I'm not going to get into all that because once I extend my hands out to you and you say no, you shut it down, it's, I can't go no farther with it. I cannot go no farther with it. Um, she has a sister. And I don't think that the sister live here in Florida. The mother and the father is deceased. She don't have brothers. So it's just her and her sister. She has friends, you no know, church members or stuff like that. People 
in Nebraska, California, Sarasota, um, um, Sacramento, not to mean say Sarasota, Sacramento, uh, and they would have to fly out, you know, but she, she's from Florida, so maybe she can call somebody, but I just can't, I, I, I want to, but I can't, but if you cannot, and I'm not trying to sound mean or bossy or those are her belongings. They had, they, you know, some of them memories and some of that is just junk. She just holding on to it. She's just holding on to it. So I'm going to do one more day with her. And she was like, I hope you stay. And I said, not under these conditions. You that just a hope that you just should have kept for something else, hope on something else because I can't do it. I just told her, and uh, I didn't even, I, I wouldn't even. This, this is something different, but you guys take care of your family members, take care of your neighbors, your friends, your best friend, take care of them, make sure they have everything they need, make sure they have everything they want. Because it's so sad when you have to go into somebody's home and it look like that. It's so sad to hear that don't nobody have a family member, you know, uh, to help them, you know. And like I said, it just hurt her sister. And they talk just enough just to get by life. But they really don't talk because some about when the mother passed away and the mother had jury and um the jury she the sister took all the jury that's material stuff i told i said that's material stuff you, 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 that's just stuff that you have the memory of your uh parents you know my mother passed away i have a lot of stuff that that was mine that when i was with my ex that it's in the storage in georgia it's still in there it's still in there you know but it's, he's supposed to gave me my stuff. He didn't, so I just have to take him back to court, you know. But a lot of stuff, other stuff I have, like her clothes, book. I even lost a lot of her purses, you know. But it is what it is, you know. And I have to keep them moving, you know. I can't. See it. it is what it is, you guys. Oh, that's all I want to say, y'all. Take care. Take care of each other. Love one another. You know, it's just me and my brother. And I promise y'all, I promise that if my brother gets sick and he needs me, he needs me to come move, all this stuff, I'm getting a U-Haul, packing all this shit up in the stuff. And packing all this shit up in that U-Haul and connect my car to that U-Haul. Let the rent office people know I got to go. I am gone. You, you, got what I'm, you get what I'm saying? If one of my children gets sick, they can come and live with me. That'll, that'll push me forward and motivate me more and go, go harder than what I'm going. To go ahead and purchase this home because now my my child got to live with me and I got to take care of my child or I got to set it up to where I can get someone to come in and take care of my child or I can have my child to be um, with the company that I work for and I can take care of my own child and get paid for it or I can have someone to come in and take care of my child while I go work with someone else. So if my my brother or any of my children get sick, or my or my grandkids and my children feel like they can't take care of their child, I will have to go and get my grandchild and do what I have to do. You know, my aunts, they are well taken care of because they have children. My uncles, they are well taken care of because they have children. And as y'all can see, my granny's damn show is taken care of. By all her children, all her grandkids, all her great grandkids, 
Now the great, 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 great grandkids can't take care of because they live with the people. You know what I'm saying? So we are blessed to still have my grandmother here. And rest in peace to Miss Holly and her family. My prayers are with them as well. My prayers are with them. But um, my granny is still here. And my granny lived her life, her children, her grandchildren, her great-grands, her great-great-great-grands, and her great-great-great-great-grands. So that's what, like, five, six generations? And she's still ticking. And I thank the Lord for that, you guys. So I'm out of here. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. Hit like, comment, and the notification bell. And, you know, tell someone about this story or share it or just pass it along. Just take care of yourself and your family. And, uh, again, live, love, laugh, laugh, love, live, peace, love, and have grease and all that good stuff, you guys. And I'm out of here. Take care. You only get one family member. I'm out.